Hello guys, gals, and anyone who identifies otherwise, and welcome to episode 12 of the Table of Terror podcast. If you're new, hi, welcome. My name is Kamiko. You can call me Miku if you'd like, and I am the creator and host of the Table of Terror podcast. So if you read the title, you probably know what we're going to talk about today, but I'm going to tell you anyway, because it's kind of what I do. And uh, today is another paranormal ritual episode. Um, I've kind of taken it upon myself to go through a bunch of popular internet uh, paranormal games, for lack of a better term, and telling you guys how dumb it is. Oh, there's my phone. Telling telling you all how dumb it is to play games like this and um, warning you not to. But uh, if for some reason you decide that you want to try out some sort of ritual, I at least want you all to be aware of what to expect, the do's and don'ts, the warning signs, how to protect yourself, and all of that. So I want you, at the very least, to be informed if you decide to do something stupid. Uh, So with that being said, we're going to talk today about the hosting game. So with some of the other paranormal rituals that we've talked about here on the show um there's a reason to do it like for example uh with the dry bones ritual and the 11 mile challenge um supposedly if you perform the ritual correctly you get a wish granted um and then there are some other rituals that like there's no reason there's there's no uh you don't get anything out of doing the ritual correctly or anything like that. And the hosting game is one of those rituals that you really don't get anything out of except the experience itself, which, in my head, screams, please do not do it. But uh, in case you do, we're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, So the hosting game uh, also goes by an alternate name, which is Don't Look Back. So sometimes you can find information about the hosting game, and sometimes it's called Don't Look Back. Um, And you'll find out why it has those two options in a minute when we jump into things. Um, The object of this paranormal game is basically just to host a party, which is a nice way of saying you're going to summon three spirits, ghosts, entities, whatever it is you want to call them. Um, And like I've said time and time again, consider not doing this ritual. There are tons of videos online of people doing it and being dumb. And if you want, like, a thrill, watch a video or read someone's experience instead of doing it yourself because these things can be dangerous, alright? I just don't want anyone to get hurt. With that little bit out of the way, let's jump into the materials or the requirements that one would need if they wanted to perform this ritual. Um, So... First and foremost, this is a one-player game only, for lack of a better term. Um, In some of the uh, articles and instructions that I read on this ritual, it says that the ghosts might feel unwelcome or uneasy if there's already a crowd in your space, so it should just be you doing the invitation and the party and stuff, which that doesn't... I, I don't know... You're worried about ghosts feeling lonely, but you're inviting them to a party, so I don't don't know how that works. But that's what it says. Um, You're going to need, preferably, a small room, but it's going to need to be dark and empty, and this is going to act as your hosting room, so your party room. And uh, ideally, it would be a room without windows, uh, but if that's not possible, you don't have a room like that, you just need to make sure that all of the windows are blocked so that no light can come in. Um, So if you, like, I don't know, I guess the best thing might be blackout curtains because you can just, like, shut them and go lights out. Um, I really don't think you should, like, tape up or board up your windows. Just, like, make sure it's dark. And um, another thing you're going to need is a writing implement, so a, a pen, a pencil, something like that, you're going to need some paper because you're going to be writing stuff down. We'll get back into that in a minute. 
But you're also going to need some sort of, I was going to say analog timekeeping, pe- like a, a clock or a watch or something like that. Um, but not one that's digital. So like a wall clock or like a, um, a regular like analog watch that's not digital. Um, because you're not going to be allowed to have cell phones or any sort of electronic devices whatsoever um, on during this game. So you're going to want a way to keep track of time without it being digitized, if that makes sense. And then you're also going to need three matches. Uh, you could just like bring a box with you, but you're, you're only going to be using three. Um, and of course, something to strike it on. So if you have matches, you're going to use a matchbox. And that, that pretty much covers uh, materials. Alright, now that we've got a little bit of context of what to expect, and we've got materials and requirements out of the way, before we jump into the invitation part of this ritual, uh, we're going to do some shameless self-promotion. If you like, th- if first of all, wow, I'm so out of order here. Um, this is the second episode of the show that you can watch on YouTube, so if you're doing that, awesome. Please like and subscribe. It helps the show out a ton. Um, If you're not watching this on YouTube, if you could do whatever, depending on the podcast, depending on which podcatcher you're listening to this podcast on, that's really a mouthful. Um, If you could leave a review or a rating or something positive, that would be awesome. I would really appreciate it. If you have any paranormal stories that you want to share, experiences, if you have future topics that you want to hear covered on the show or anything like that, you can send an email to our our email. Uh, it's tableofterrorpod at gmail.com. Um, or you can get in touch with us on social media. You can find us on Instagram and on Twitter at table of terror with an underscore after it. Everything that I mentioned is going to be in the show notes, um, including resources and information and any extra stuff I might forget to say. Um, But also you can find me, Kamiko, on on Instagram and Twitter at Miko Rios. That's M-E-K-O and my last name, R-I-O-S. And of course... If you would like to support the show monetarily in any sort of way, the easiest way for you to do that is to go join our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash tableofterrorpod. You can start out with $1 a month. You get early access to all the episodes and videos. You get um, uh, links to all the resources that we use. Anything extra that we decide to do at the show is going to be on Patreon. So if you're interested in that, Go on over and check it out. Like I said, links are going to be in the show notes or the description based on whatever platform you are listening slash viewing this on. And with all of that out of the way, I think I said everything that I needed to say. Uh, We're we're going to jump into uh, the instructional part of how to actually perform this ritual. So let's start with the invitation, okay? Uh, We've got this broken down in steps. Step one is to begin at night and you're going to want to keep your timepiece so your watch or your clock with you the entire time you're doing this ritual because it's important to keep track of time. All right, so step 2 is to turn off any possible source of noise. Turn off your cell phone, turn off your computer, turn off an alarm clock, turn off Everything, iPod, MP3 player, radio, anything that you can plug in that makes noise, even if it's not plugged in, anything digital that makes noise, you're going to want to turn it off. Make sure to do a thorough sweep of your hosting room to make sure that it is quiet and dark. So like we mentioned before, blacking out the windows, making sure that there is no light happening that's coming through the windows or light sources lamps. I have no words today. This is weird. Um, But you get the picture. Make sure it's dark and quiet. Step three is to enter the hosting room and to turn on the light. You can use a flashlight or a candle or a portable light, but um, you know, if, if the room isn't lit itself. But if you decide to use a candle, just keep in mind that candles can be fire hazards and depending on 
what kind of room that you're using and how dark it is, uh, it can be a fire hazard. So just be mindful of your surroundings if you decide to use something with an open flame like a candle. Um, and also you're going to be using matches. So again, open flame, just be aware of your surroundings. Uh, step four is to place your pen or your pencil, whatever you're writing with, and your piece of paper in the hosting room. Why did that go off? My, my computer is making noise and I didn't even think it was turned on. Hold on one sec. Okay, now that it's taken care of. Uh, so step four was to pe put your writing instrument and your pa piece of paper, wow, words, in the hosting room. And step five is to leave the light source, whatever you're using, on and leave the hosting room. So get out, okay? You're going to move from room to room of your house saying the following. You're going to say, I'll be ready soon as you go into each room. So just do a full sweep of the house. Um, you should start with the room farthest from whatever hosting room you're going to be in and work your way back to the room. So go um, work your way from farther away until you get closer and closer and closer. And eventually you're going to end up at your hosting room again. So when you step six is when you do get back to your hosting room, you're going to write the following on a piece of paper. Um, you're going to say, you're invited. A gathering hosted by, and whatever your name is, takes place from whatever time it is when you're starting the ritual to whatever it is an hour later. Bring your, f so, okay, let's, let's break this down even further. Uh, what time is it right now? It's 317 right now, so let's say I wanted to start this ritual in three minutes. Um, what I would write on that piece of paper is, you're invited. A gathering hosted by Kamiko takes place from, what did I say? 320 uh, to 420. Uh, bring your friends. And that's what I would write on that piece of paper if I decided to do this, which I will not be doing this. Under no circumstances would I do a ritual like this. Uh, it sounds terrifying. You're, you're, you're actually inviting th three, supposedly, uh, spirits, entities, ghosts, into your home, the place where you live, place where you sleep, place where you have your family. And I just think that this sounds like a really bad idea. Especially, like, you don't get anything out of this ritual. There's nothing in it for you, except possibly getting the shit scared out of you. And if not, then you're wasting an hour of time. Uh, but that's just my opinion. I, of course, would not be doing anything like this with an hour of my time. So once you have written your little spiel, your, your invitation, excuse me, not a spiel, it's an invitation. Once you've written your invitation, you're going to place that piece of paper, that invitation, in the middle of your hosting room. That's step seven. And step eight is to stand in the doorway of the hosting room and call into the room. And you're going to say, I'm ready. Come on in. Ugh. Uh... I, I don't like any part of this ritual. I'm going to be honest. I, I hate all of it. Having some trouble with the notes here. Alright, so now let's get into the actual gathering, or like the party, whatever you want to call it. Um, step one is to turn off the lights and to turn around and open the door of the hosting room. So... You open the door, the hosting room should be behind you, and you're going to take out your matches and your matchbook. Step two is to take a moment of silence, and then you're going to count out loud from one to ten. Do not look behind you, no matter what happens. Which is why the other name for this ritual is don't look back. Because at no point during this game are you allowed to look behind you. If you do you messed up and just, you're going to have to end the ritual. Uh, so yeah, you can't look behind you at any point during this quote-unquote party. Step three is when you've reached ten, you're going to strike the first match. 
If it lights on the first strike, you're going to hold it as it burns and greet your guests by saying, I'm so glad to see you. Thank you for coming. And you're going to hold the match burning for as long as you can bear it. Um, if it doesn't light on the first strike, you're supposed to drop it and proceed to the next step, which the next step is do not look behind you and to strike the second match. Now, the rules are the same for the second as it is with the first match. If it lights on the first strike, you're going to greet your guests by saying, I'm so glad to see you, thank you for coming, blah, blah, blah. If it doesn't, um, uh, if it doesn't light on the first strike, you're going to go ahead and go light your, th again, don't look behind you, but you're going to write, uh, right? You're going to light your third match, and if... It lights on the first try. You're going to greet your guests by saying, I'm so glad to see you. Thank you for coming. But this is really important, okay? Um, if your third match does not light on the first strike, it is supposed to mean that you have uninvited guests. So things that you did not intend to invite, but they showed up anyway. So... At that point, if that if that happens and you have uninvited guests, you are not supposed to look behind you or turn around at all. You're not supposed to take a like a, a second to close the door or anything like that. You're just gonna get up, go to the closest light switch, and turn on the lights, light up the house, um, and yeah, that's a bad thing because that means you failed to perform the ritual correctly, and. Uh, it's just, it's not, it's not, having uninvited entities in your house is not something that I would want at all. But, if the third match does light on the first try, then, um, you are supposed to say, now everyone's here, and you're supposed to count to ten. Now, supposedly, if you've done this part correctly, you are supposed to hear or feel some whispering or rustling behind you. You might, um, some people have, um, have talked about even hearing a quiet voice saying thank you behind them, um, which sounds terrifying. But, again, just to reiterate, if any of this happens, do not look behind you, um, and for the next hour of time, you have your timepiece to keep track of time, hopefully. Um, you are going to just kind of kill an hour of time until the ritual can be closed, finished, until the party's over, basically. Um, now, um, you're supposed to kind of just, like, move around your space, whatever. You don't have to stay in the hosting room anymore. You're just supposed to, like, walk around your house and whatever. Um, but... Again, under no circumstances at any point during this ritual are you supposed to look behind you. So keep that in mind, because if you do look behind you at some point, you're supposed to turn on the lights, and, you know, that is supposed to, like, end the ritual. But um, sometimes when you do things incorrectly, you don't actually get rid of the entities that you have summoned when you think that you're going to or supposed to, or you think it happens and it just really doesn't. Notes, 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 notes. Uh, let's see. So, um, you kill an hour of time, you have your party, whatever. When that hour is up, you are supposed to say out loud, thank you for coming, goodbye. And you're supposed to walk to the nearest light, light switch and turn it on. And at this point, the gathering should be over, your party should be over, and your guests should then be gone. Um, but e even though turning on the lights should end your gathering or your party, um, whatever the event that you're hosting for these spirits that you invited into your house, don't necessarily assume that your wanted or unwanted guests have left just because you dismissed them. Like, even in real life, do you ever have a party? Do you ever have people over? 
and you're like, okay, love you. I'm like, we're wrapping up and they just like stand around for hours longer and like work their way towards the door while still talking and chatting and like, love you. Bye. Oh my God. I want to see you. I'll see you again. Oh my God. Bye. And that just drags on forever. Um, Don't assume that these spirits are any different like just because you say uh thank you for coming goodbye it doesn't necessarily mean that's going to get rid of them so keep in mind again like tons of red flags that this should not be a ritual that you're trying to perform because like the (laughs) the uh the option for bad things to happen the like the margin of error is so large and things like this that it just never seems worth it to me um but that's, again, that's my opinion. And uh, something else that I... Look, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't perform a ritual like this in my own space, in my own home. Because, like, the, the I don't want my home haunted. And I'm not saying that you should go haunt somebody else's house. Uh, but, uh, no, just, just don't just don't do this ritual. How about that? It would be it would be that easy to avoid any sort of nastiness is to just not perform this ritual. So a couple things after this ritual, I would recommend doing some sort of cleansing ritual or something like that. Um, a cleansing, a smudging, a blessing of the room or the house, whatever, just to like clear the energy and stuff, especially if you do this in your own home. Um, I would also, again, I would, I would just not do this in my own house, um, but I've read things on the topic that say you should avoid dark rooms at that point, which is disconcerting because, like, you do this ritual and you might, like, never be comfortable in a dark room again, like, it might never be safe for you again, and that just seems like a bad idea. So again, if you do a ritual like this, I would I would always suggest some sort of cleansing of the space, regardless of your beliefs. If you want to have a priest or a clergy member or something like that come in, go for it. If you want to do smudging or if something like that on your own, go for it. Whatever you need to do to feel safe in your own space again, uh, you should do it. I mean... It's, it's your space. Take it back. Okay, so, yes, if you're seeing this on YouTube, yes, this is a completely different setup. Uh, it's a completely different day. I, this is normally the part of the podcast where I, uh, go into people's accounts and testimonies, um, having performed the ritual that is the topic of discussion, but for the hosting game, I couldn't really find anything. There's there <laughs> there's not a whole lot. Uh, I I I will talk about just like paraphrase uh, the experience of someone that I found through Tumblr. Um, but, but there's there's just not a lot of people t- talking about um, their experience with this ritual. Um, but in looking for, wow, I can't speak right now, in looking for somebody's experience, I came across, uh, one, um, website that said that the hosting game was a Wiccan or witch ritual, and... I did some digging to see if that was in fact true, and I, I couldn't find anything on it at, uh, either. So, so uh, is it? Is it? I have no idea. Um, if you're Wiccan or a witch, or and and you might know, please let me know. I would love to actually be informed on that. Uh, yeah, I came across a site that said, hey, witches used to do this because they were outcasts and it was a way for them to throw parties, uh, without 
people there. And, and I don't know uh, how much of that is true, but it's an interesting concept. Uh, I just don't have enough information to say to you, hey, this was a ritual witches used to do or anything like that. So uh, I'll leave the source that I found in the show notes in the description. But again, I have no idea if it's actually true. And because I could really only find one experience, one, one person's, one person that had written about their experience with the hosting game, I paraphrased it, and uh, I'll share that with you guys right now, but there, uh, there's just not a whole lot to go on. So, there's someone on Tumblr, uh, and the, I really can't speak right now, wow, the, what is it, name of their Tumblr blog is Jess Says Things, so I'm assuming that this person's name is Jess, and uh Basically, uh, during the duration of this blog post, uh, she performed this ritual. She she played the hosting game, but it was entirely uneventful. She said that nothing really happened during the ritual. But after the ritual, um, Jess and her boyfriend go to bed for the night, and... Um, Jess kind of mentions that she has a favorite nail polish that she uses. It's like a red nail polish. And she puts it in a specific spot, and it wasn't there when she and her boyfriend went to bed. But she wasn't really worried about it because her roommate had a tendency to steal things, which sucks. Um, But she noticed before going to bed that the nail polish was not in its regular spot and um they get into bed whatever her boyfriend falls asleep but Jess describes the room progressively getting darker and darker blacker and blacker and she says that she doesn't remember falling asleep but the last thing she remembers was reaching for her phone to turn on the light to to see because it was getting black and it freaked her out um so she doesn't remember falling asleep but she remembers an awful dream that included a hooded figure it it included her i think uh performing a different ritual and during that ritual um she took some pills but then uh, kind of started to come out of the dream and felt drugged um which that's it's a terrifying dream to have, uh, especially after doing like a crazy ritual that may or may not be something that witches used to. Again, I don't, I don't know. It just it gives me bad vibes. And um, so they go to bed. She notices the nail polish is polish is missing. She has this awful dream, and she and her boyfriend wake up, wake up for work the next morning, and get this, her bottle of red nail polish was in its usual spot. So Jess doesn't want to jump to conclusions. It kind of thinks that she might have made a mistake, that it really was there the night before. So she wakes up her boyfriend, but he confirms for her that the nail polish was not there the night before. But yes, it is now there after waking up the next morning. So I mean, this story was kind of the only thing I could find on the hosting game. Uh, There are YouTube videos that I can link in the show notes and description if you want to take a look at people actually performing the ritual. But like with all of these things, I am going to recommend that you don't perform a ritual. I know that the world is crazy and... Like, people might be bored, people might be upset, but, like, there there are other things that you can do. Just don't do this. I have made it my business to at least try and make sure people are informed, which is why I am up front with you all, and I say things like, I don't know if this is true, but I read somewhere that it might have been a witch ritual. Um, Because if I don't know, I don't, 
I don't want you to think that I know. Because I don't know. So, <laughs> with all of that being said, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you could like and subscribe on all of the platforms, that would be great. Um, I've got some stuff up here in the description, in the show notes. Ways that you can get in touch, all that fun jazz. You already, I already gave you a spiel. I gave you the spiel at the beginning. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the hosting game. It's, um, not something that I will ever be doing. But, I, d can you hear that owl? It's really loud. I can hear it and I have headphones on. But it's really loud. Um, I do, however, want to get back into ghost hunting. So, if you are in San Bernardino, LA area, and you want to go ghost hunting, hit me up on the social medias, because I need more friends who are into paranormal stuff. And if there is a topic that you want us to cover on the show, us, I say us like there's more than one person, me, if there's a, a topic that you want me to cover on the show, let me know. <laughs> I can't take myself seriously at all today, and I also am, like, tripping over my own tongue, which is not a rare occurrence, but I didn't expect it to happen when I <laughs> sat down to record this last part of the podcast. Anyway, um, as always, please take care of yourself, take care of your friends and family, check in on the people that you love, and... Don't forget to drink water, because it's good for your body. Okay, bye!